What if the moon suddenly accelerated, smashed into Earth at 12 kilometers per second, or about 8 miles per second? This may sound like a crazy idea, but in astronomical terms, it's quite plausible. Our moon is slowly drifting away from us, moving about 3 centimeters, or 1.2 inches further each year. And if that trend were to somehow speed up drastically, our satellite could crash into our planet in just a few million years. But what would happen then? How would such an impact affect our home planet? Let's find out. The moon is one of Earth's natural satellites along with dwarf planet Haumea, about 14 known asteroids and a couple dozen comets that have been temporarily captured by its gravity. But our satellite is unique in many ways. It's the largest of all natural satellites relative to their planets. No other satellite accounts for more than 1% of its parent planet's mass. In comparison, the moon is almost eight times heavier than Earth's core. Our moon also rotates around Earth faster than any other satellite. That's twice as fast as most major satellites. Plus, the moon is just 384,000 kilometers or 238,000 miles away from Earth. That makes it our closest space neighbor and the main factor behind Earth's tides. Our satellite's gravity is 6% of Earth's gravity. Even though the moon is so close, it took almost three days for its gravitational field to significantly slow down the Earth's rotation after its formation. For billions of years, the moon has been drifting away from Earth at 3.8 centimeters or 1.5 inches per year, which equals 0.09 kilometers or 0.06 miles per hour. But how did it happen? Why does the moon move away from Earth? And when will it fly away completely? The answer is pretty simple. There's nothing keeping the moon in orbit. In fact, it's constantly falling toward Earth, but it is so evenly matched with the centrifugal force that pushes the moon away from our planet that they neutralize each other. Well, almost. So the moon keeps falling and falling and missing Earth every time. This means that our satellite isn't just drifting away from us, it's actually moving faster in orbit. Every 100 years or so, the moon's orbital velocity changes by 1.5 meters per second or about 1 mile per second due to gravitational perturbations caused by Venus, Jupiter, Neptune, and Mars. However, such changes don't affect long-term trends. The moon still moves away from us at 3.8 centimeters or 1.5 inches per year, though sometimes this rate can be higher. For example, in June 2020, the distance between Earth and the moon decreased by 11 centimeters or 4.3 inches in one day alone. What was that caused by? A strong typhoon? Scientists believe that typhoons and other whirlwinds cause measurable changes in Earth's shape. In turn, this affects the planet's gravitational field and the trajectory of the moon, but these are minor shifts. Long term, the moon is still drifting away from us, and here's why that's not good news. As the moon moves away from Earth, the level of its impact decreases. About 4.5 billion years ago, when our satellite was much closer to Earth, its gravitational field had a huge impact on our planet. Then Earth's climate was chaotic and unstable. Volcanoes were erupting everywhere, shattering the fragile atmosphere. The young Earth was constantly bombarded by meteorites and the impacts were very powerful because the atmosphere was much thinner back then. Life couldn't emerge in such conditions. The moon helped stabilize the climate on Earth. It slowed down volcanic activity and protected the planet from large meteorites. But over time, the moon's influence became weaker. And now it can't stop small asteroids anymore. For example, the Chelyabinsk meteor that exploded over Russia in 2013 went unnoticed until it was too late. If the moon were closer to Earth, its gravity would have drawn the asteroid's path. Back then, it would have disintegrated in the upper atmosphere, leaving no threat to cities. So, as the moon moves away from Earth, we get less protected from space debris. 
In the future, the moon will cease to protect Earth from dangerous objects, but it'll take millions of years. Currently, the moon is moving away from us at a safe speed. However, there have been cases when our satellite suddenly changed its course and moved even closer to Earth. Those were supermoons. It happens when the full moon coincides with the moon's closest approach to Earth in its orbit. The last supermoon occurred in March 2017. The next ones will be in August and September 2023. Can a supermoon turn into a super collision? Yes, it can. If the moon moved 50 times faster, it would crash into Earth in just a few million years. It sounds scary, but this scenario is quite likely. In astronomical terms, the moon flies around Earth at a low speed. It'll run out of orbit in about 50 million years and fall to our planet. Then our satellite will either burn up in the atmosphere or fall to Earth as a huge meteorite. But maybe the moon will accelerate even earlier. If it were twice as fast, it would crash into Earth in about 2 million years. If three times as fast, it would happen in just 1.5 million years. And if 10 times as fast, the moon would smash into Earth in only 500,000 years. But what would that impact be like? Would it destroy our planet or would it make it even better? Will we witness another mass extinction or maybe the emergence of intelligent life? The answer depends on the moon's mass. Modern research shows that even if the moon were just two times heavier, its gravity would be comparable to Earth's gravity. Back in 2005, scientists Greg Laughlin and Richard Ponek even wrote a whole book called The Fall of the Moon. They describe a fictional world where the moon abruptly doubles in mass, causing earthquakes, tsunamis, and terrible volcanoes. So let us assume that the moon is twice as heavy and twice as fast as it is now. What would happen if it suddenly accelerated and fell to Earth? First, the moon would knock Earth out of orbit and make it crash into the sun. After that, our planet would become a charred meteorite. Humanity would have no chance to survive such a catastrophe, so it's best not to think about it. But let's imagine that everything would go differently. Maybe the moon wouldn't gain much mass, just a bit. Or maybe it would slow down gradually and approach Earth not as a meteorite, but as a space probe. In that case, we could use the moon for scientific research. Its surface is covered with craters left by meteorite impacts. They contain minerals that could help find the answers to the origin of the solar system and the universe itself. Plus, the moon's soil contains helium-3, an element that can be used to power future thermonuclear reactors. The moon might also help us survive the climate change that we caused ourselves. In 2024, NASA plans to launch the first of the first missions to study the moon in 50 years. Artemis program will bring astronauts to our satellite again and build a research base there. We need to explore the moon's resources before we mine them. And who knows, maybe someday people will live there. We're already making plans for the future bases on the moon. Some experts suggest creating settlements in craters near the poles where there is ice that can be used for drinking and greenhouse farming. Others want to build research centers right on the moon's surface. What do you think? Should we colonize the moon or leave it alone? And what would you like to find out about the moon? Let me know in the comments. And thanks for watching. See you later.